My name is Jolene Garcia and I am going to go over the evaluation criteria for the nine overhead projections on my BE trigger. The first being my PA scout, which is going to be a KUB. It's the first image that's taken uh, before you um, give the contrast to a patient. These are pictures with contrast in the patient, but essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to um, be centering the, the, the central ray to perpendicular to the IR and enter the midline of the body at the level of the iliac crest. Um, I had mine in my VE trigger at a PA uh, projection, and um, what you're looking for is you're looking for evidence of the proper collimation, entire colon, including flexures in the rectum, um, you want the vertebral column centered so that the ascending and descending portions of the colon are included and um, an exposure technique that shows all the anatomy um, as just mentioned. So that is going to be for the things that you're looking for um, on a PA scout. Um, next we're going to be doing the PA uh, KUB after the contrast has been introduced. As this image show shows there is contrast introduced as you can see all the white here. Um, with this image, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to central the ray perpendicular to the IR, uh, enter the midline of the body at the level of the iliac crest, and then we're going to be using a 14 by 17 uh, inch IR. Um, in, in my trigger specifically, it was also a PA projection. This is also um, an image of a PA projection that shows an evaluation criteria for this. Um, we're looking also for evidence of proper collimation, um, the entire colon, including the flexures, um, the, uh, the rectum, and um, the vertebral column centered so that the ascending and descending portions of the colon are included. Um, exposure, an, an exposure technique that shows the anatomy as well. Um, the next one I'm going to be going over is going to be our um, PA oblique projections. Um, that was what I did next in my um, in my trigger. It was an RAO for my third image after the first two KUB, one without the contrast and the second one with the contrast. So the third one, the third image that I took was an RAO. And with this one, this is going to be what the image looks like. And to know that you got a proper image, you want to make sure that there's evidence of proper collimation. The entire colon is um, insight, the right colic flexure is going to um, be less superimposed or open compared with the PA projection. The ascending colon, the cecum, and the sigmoid colon are going to be vi visible, um, and also an exposure technique that shows all of this anatomy. Um, okay, then next after that, I did the LAO position, and this is going to be the image that is shown by an LAO position right here. And here you want to have evidence of proper collimation of the entire, and then you want to have the entire colon visible. The left colic flexure, which is less, is going to be less superimposed, um, which is right up here. The left um, colic flexure less superimposed, and or open compared with the PA, um, with the PA projection. Um, you want to have the descending colon full visibility, which is right here. Um, you want an exposure technique that shows the anatomy as well. And then after the LAO, I did a PA axial um, as my fifth image. And with that, this is going to be what you're looking at right here. This is, this is the image of a proper fifth PA axial. And with that, um, you want to have evidence of proper collimation, the, rect, uh, the rectosigmoid area centered to the image. Um, we used the 10 by 12 inch IR as well. Uh, the rectoid sigmoid area with less superimposition than in PA projection um, because of angulation of the central ray, which is the 30 to 40 degree angle that we put on the um, tube and we did it caudally. Uh, the transverse colon and both flexures are always included in this image um, and an exposure technique that shows the anatomy as well. Um, after we did the PA axial, I moved on and did a left lateral and with the left lateral position. Um, this is what it's going to look like. This is what you want to see as a left lateral um, image. And again, you want to have proper collimation, evidence of proper collimation, the recto, the recto sigmoid area of the center 
at the center of the image. Um, no rotation of the patient. You're going to find that by making sure that the hips and the femora are superimposed. Uh, you want a superior portion of colon not included when the rectosigmoid region is um, the area of interest. And then again, an exposure technique that shows all of the anatomy. Um, after I did the left lateral, we went on to our decubitus position, starting with the right lateral decubitus, which is going to be right here. So with the right lateral decubitus, this is going to be the image that you want to see, either of the two, the top or the bottom, they're both um, right decubes. And with that, you want to have evidence of proper collimation again, area from the left colic flexor to the rectum. There should be no rotation of the patient as demonstrated by symmetry of the ribs and pelvis. Um, for single contrast examinations, adequate penetration of the barium. For double contrast examinations, the air inflated portion of the colon is of primary importance and should not be um, over penetrated.